Raptors fans, we have the privilege of being joined by Raptors assistant coach John Malela, my good friend. How you doing, buddy? I'm great, Akil, man. Thanks for having me. It's good to be in your space. Good to be on your show. Oh, thank you. So um, we have the privilege of talking to you today. And the main talking point, really, is Giants of Africa, the game Friday night versus the Knicks. But first off, we want to talk about your involvement because you've been part of this process. A native of Swaziland, correct? Yeah, exactly. So obviously, Africa near and dear to my heart, uh, being born in Swaziland, now called Eswatini, and returning back to the continent as much as I possibly possibly can most summers with Giants of Africa. This is a special time of the year when we can celebrate GOA, celebrate with the gala, celebrate with the clinics, and celebrate the amazing work that Masai and the program does. So walk us through your role and how a regular summer goes for GOA. Man, it's a pretty busy summer. So okay. with all my Raptor commitments, which I'm doing a ton of different stuff, then we add on everything for Giants of Africa. And for me, that's kind of helping to run a lot of our programming. Uh, so this past summer, we were in Rwanda. We had an amazing festival, probably the most special and incredible basketball event I've ever been part of in my life. So many participants from all over the continent coming to one spot, loving basketball, loving music, loving life, loving art, like so incredible. And I got to help run that, can- that camp and clinics. That was super fun for me. And usually that's my role, to help the basketball part of Giants of Africa and make sure the programming is great. Okay, so talking about the basketball part of Giants of Africa, the Raptors have benefited greatly. If you talk about our roster, we see guys like Pascal and Precious who are huge contributors to the Raptors' success. Talk about their journeys and how pivotal GOA has been to the development of the players on the ground coming into the NBA. Yeah, I mean, I think it's amazing for me being part of GOA for so many years. I've actually coached people in those camps that are NBA players now. Yeah. And it's incredible when that happens, right? When you see a young man and you're coaching him is 15 years old and suddenly you're doing a scouting report and he's the guy you're sort of you know trying to figure out how you're going to stop. That's special. Uh, and so seeing that progression, Precious obviously is our live example here with the Raptors and seeing his involvement in camps in Nigeria way back when and now to be with the Toronto Raptors playing at an NBA level is so special. It means so much and I think it, it validates kind of what you're doing. But on top of that, and, I, and I'd be remiss if I don't mention it, like there's so many other alumni that are part of Giants of Africa that are successful in other ways, right? There's so many lawyers, doctors, politicians that have used that program to further their careers. So great basketball success but great off-the-court success with people that have gone through the program. Okay, I I want you to name drop a bit. Talk about some of the guys who you see on a night-to-night basis who've gone through the camp. We know Joel's a a graduate, correct? Uh, I think Joel is definitely a graduate of BWB programming. I'm not sure he did GOA specifically, but he's definitely obviously from the continent and huge success. We're all so proud of him. Uh, You see younger players like Charles Bassey, he's a player with the Spurs, uh, who sort of, you know, coached him in in Nigeria, and now he's off doing big things. Uh, Gorgi was someone who was part of um, BWB as well. Uh, Luke Mabute part of BWB. So there's all these guys that are kind of part of this this young group of camp programming on the continent that now are making it to the NBA. It's really cool to see. But I think Precious, to, especially for Raptor fans, that's a special one. And I think to see how he's grown as a person, right, from when he, what he was as a camper to now how he's grown as a person and as a man now, like that's really cool to watch. Now, how much will the game change now that there's investment in Africa? Like, we even look right now, Victor Wembenyama of Congolese descent, mm-hmm. Alexander Saar of Senegalese descent. These guys obviously not fr- not playing in Africa, but with the league and with the investment that Masai and his cohorts have put in, how big is this impact going to be? Is the face of the NBA changing right now? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look, you know, five, six years ago, the Raptors were leading the charge in terms of, like, this sense of what's happening on the continent and sort of being able to identify talent. Uh, but to be honest, all these other teams are catching up. They're yeah. seeing that there's so many good players. And almost every team now has someone who's scouting in Africa. When you travel on the globe now, like, when we go to do programming on the continent, like, we're seeing people from other teams. They're, they're catching on, unfortunately, uh, because there's so much talent. And I think there's so many young people, like Pascal's a great example, right, of someone who's who's really sort of done things and moved the, moved the needle the right way. Kamingo with the Warriors. Like, there's so many players that are coming out of the continent that just can hoop and can play and love the game and the more the merrier and I think we we wish all of them success as we continue to grow basketball players and and coaches from the continent. Now we've talked about the men let's talk about the women I know you're involved talk to me about this dream big clinic that's going on. Yeah I think that's where Maasai and Giants of Africa have been been special so probably eight or nine years ago we realized that we need to be doing women's programming as well and there's such an upsurge of of talent and exceptional people uh, on the women's side of the game as well so for the last few years we've been doing joint programming so all GOA camps now are, are both men or women when we're doing it on the continent. But this one we're going to do here is extra special because this will be a women's only. And I'm talking completely women's only programming. So from clinicians to uh, videographers covering it to obviously the participants, it's all women. And that'll create a really special space where they can grow with the sport of basketball and be comfortable and connect and just love hooping. All right. Now, I know you're here for GOA, but I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to ask you some Raptor specific mm-hmm. questions. Your second tour of duty with the team 
this time under Coach Darko, talk to us about his system and what he's brought to this organization. Yeah, I mean, it's really special to be home, first of all. And thanks. good to see you again. Yep. So familiar faces. Glad to have like, you it's back. It's special, right? It's, this is home. And I think whenever you can return home, it means a lot for my family, for my kids. Like, it's just nice to be back in this environment. Uh, I've spent many years, blood, sweat, and tears uh, with the Raptors, so it feels like I'm home, which is really nice. So I'm really thankful. Um, I think Darko is really special. And I think my relationship with him before signing on to come back was, was one that I had to really figure out. And who is this person? And who is he as a head coach? And does it work for us to work together and it's been a resounding yes uh, he's so special in terms of the way he cares for people cares for his athletes tries to create an environment that's full of energy and life and sort of um, and positivity and that's kind of how I like to operate as well so the two of us have connected really well and it's fun to see this sort of journey start we're just at the infancy of kind of what this can be and sort of new systems and new culture uh, but it's fun to watch it grow well talk about watching someone grow from Raptors Basketball Academy to now being on the Raptors bench. It's been an amazing journey for myself to watch you, Jamma. And we thank you so much for finding time to kick it with us. We appreciate you, but I'm gonna let you get back to work. Man, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Jamma, for joining us on Raptors today. Do remember if you want to help lift a giant, make sure to scan the QR code to donate. Empowering African youth to dream big. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to click the link. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 